any fleeting analysis soon reveals Nabokov's long preoccupation with adult child sex. Adult males with an unhealthy interest in young girls appear in many of his novels, including Laughter in the Dark, Invitation to a Beheading, The Gift, The Enchanter, Ben Sinister, Lolita, and Look at the Harlequins. Nabokov personally regarded pedophilia as the commonest thing. As literary critic Christopher Hitchens observed in his recent tribute to Lolita, it is clear Nabokov thought a great deal about adult men having sex with children. To date, critical appraisal of Nabokov's prose has largely been conducted through conventional literary lenses. New insights into the author's work can be gleaned, however, by approaching his writings from a more scientific angle. Nabokov was a highly respected scientist as well as a writer. He made many significant contributions to the study of butterflies and moths, or Lepidoptera. You are an expert in butterflies. I am, I am to, to, to a certain extent. During a 1958 interview, Nabokov confirmed he read many psychological case studies as part of his background research for Lolita. But you must have, uh, you must have read a newspaper or been, a, been aware of this strange sexual symbolism or this oddity in a minority of humans which has shocked so many people about Lolita. Uh, I have read a considerable number of case histories. Uh, I would uh, say that I became quite an expert uh, in those matters. Uh, I, I have not. The pioneering work of the 19th century sexologists Richard von Kraft Ebbing and Havelock Ellis exerted a significant influence on Nabokov. Kraft Ebbing's major text, Psychopathia Sexualis, is widely credited with introducing the term pedophilia erotica into the modern taxonomy. Kraft Ebbing regarded pedophiles as non-virile, silly, weak, and mentally unstable men. Nabokov's portrait of Humbert as a fragile European-style dandy reflects his broad agreement on the effeminate demeanor and unbalanced mind of the child molester. Nabokov regarded Havelock Ellis as his favorite sexologist. Humbert's confessional first-person narrative in Lolita was heavily influenced by the case study of the anonymous Russian pedophile Victor X, published in 1926. In his work on sexual inversion, Ellis described boy marriage by capture arrangements prevailing in countries such as Albania, Greece and Persia. Ellis also recognized the once common sexual abuse of boys in Turkish bathhouses and noted how some boys, trapped in pedophilic relationships, wore makeup and dressed and behaved like girls. Although influenced by Kraft Ebbing and Ellis, Nabokov's literature offers more profound insights into pedophilia. For one thing, he recognized the intensity of the predator's aesthetic and erotic preference for children's physically immature bodies. While undertaking research for Lolita, he compiled statistics on the average age, height and weight of young American girls. Humbert duly informs the reader, his nymphette stands 4 foot 9 inches tall and weighs only 78 pounds. When he books in at the Enchanted Hunter's Hotel, Humbert indicates Lolita is only 10 years old, not 12. Unfortunately, Lolita's prepubescent status has been obscured by the two film adaptations. Both Sue Lyon and Dominique Swain are considerably older, taller and heavier than Humbert's nymphette. Although Stanley Kubik hired Nabokov as a scriptwriter and film consultant, he ignored the author's suggestion that a dwarf play the role of Lolita. Nabokov's literary profile of the pedophile has won high praise from trained professionals. Psychologist James Hawley lauded Nabokov for offering fascinating insights into the thoughts, feelings and actions of a child molester. Nabokov frequently sought to expose the child predator's deeply disturbed reality. His deviant characters experience a range of distorted cognitions, 
including verbal, hearing and vision problems, as well as empathy deficits. Only recently have human science researchers begun to regard such characteristics as defining hallmarks of pedophilia. Within the Enchanter, Arthur climbs into bed beside 12-year-old Maria and sees her through cut glass. He is unable to find the focal point of happiness. Humbert too must make a focal adjustment in order to detect his elusive nymphette. While stalking Lolita, he sees her through prismatic layers of light and leers at her taut little rear through the wrong end of the telescope. Later on, Humbert confuses his rival Quilter's envious question, where, where the, the devil, devil did you get her? For the, the weather, weather is getting, getting better. better. Speech difficulties constantly afflict Humbert as he lisps like a snake, yet I try, and asks Lolita, what's the catter with misses? instead of, what's the matter with kisses? His detached observation of Lolita's sobs in the night, every night the moment I feign sleep, reflect Humbert's tragic inability to empathize with his young victim. Modern research confirms pedophiles tend to blame children, insisting they were seduced by their victims. Via his novels, Nabokov drew attention to the modus operandi of pedophiles. His plot lines describe the child predator's stalking behaviours as well as their tendency to target single mothers with children. Humbert and Arthur both pursue widows with young daughters. Nabokov highlighted the pedophile's secret pursuit of voyeuristic pleasures. Humbert secretly masturbates while spying on an infect. Nabokov was also keenly aware of how some pedophiles resort to drugging victims to advance their objectives. Arthur contemplates sedating his wife so that he can molest 12-year-old Maria. Humbert experiments with different strength tranquilizers, dropping them into Charlotte's nightcap so that he might have his way with Lolita. At the Enchanted Hunter's Hotel, Humbert tricks Lolita into swallowing a purple pill and is bitterly disappointed to find her fully awake when he joins her in bed. In The Enchanter and Lolita, Nabokov exposes how pedophiles pamper and seduce children in order to gain their cooperation. Arthur bribes Maria and her mother with glazed chestnuts. Humbert sends Lolita chocolates while she's away at summer camp. Both men ponder how best to initiate their child victims into sexualized activities. Arthur knows he must not make too precipitous an attempt on Maria's virginity in the tightest and pinkest sense of the term. As part of his sexual foreplay, Humbert licks Lolita's eyeball, strokes her shins, and engages in an act of fotterism with her on the Davenport. Nabokov was also well aware of the pedophile's aesthetic taste for child pornography. After Lolita proves to be too precocious Humbert eventually discovers she was recruited into a child pornography ring by Quilty back at summer camp. Quilty later tries to appease Humbert by offering to show him his erotica collection. Popular culture's long affair with seductive Lolita consistently ignores the hidden sexual training she was subjected to in the sordid underworld ruled by the child pornographer. The Bokov's literature also opens doors to the pedophile community's long reliance on codes. In life as well as art, pedophiles have often been likened to spiders that drug and cocoon their prey before sucking them dry. In Australian prison slang, pedophiles are known as rock spiders. The arachnid theme may owe a debt to the mother goose tail, Little Miss Muffet. Nabokov made deft use of the spider pedophile metaphor within his writings. In Invitation to a Beheading, a spider inhabits Cincinnatus's prison cell as young Emmy dances around, begging him to marry her. Within the Enchanter, Arthur is compared to a spider as he stalks children in the park. He imagines embracing Maria 
with eight hands, which turned into eight tentacles affixed to every detail of her nudity. The spider pedophile analogy is reinforced in Lolita, where Humbert morphs into a spider spinning and plucking at his web as he lies in wait for his hapless nymphette. The pedophilic underworld has made a habit of appropriating themes from Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland tales. In 1998, police cracked the sophisticated KGB encryption code used by the Wonderland Club, which traded thousands of child porn images over the internet. Wonderland became an obsession, a virtual community that brought paedophiles together. A recent FBI report found some members of the paedophile community now favor wearing jewelry featuring triangles within triangles and hearts within hearts. Nabokov's memoirs suggest an older pedophilic code that equates a child with a green leaf may have brought an abrupt end to his own idyllic childhood. A scientifically orientated analysis suggests that in writing Lolita, Nabokov attempted to share much needed information about child molesters with the general public. His literary preoccupation with incest and pedophilia is nothing short of remarkable. Is it possible Nabokov had deeply personal, albeit secret, reasons for pursuing this troubling subject matter.